Yeah, because I mean, you know, this is, you know, the third, the third Clerks film. Did you guys ever think, you know, way back when that, you know, you'd still be making these films? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, if anyone, if like a, if a doctor walked out of a TARDIS into the quick stop back in 93 saying, you're going to be here in 28 years doing the exact same thing. I thought I would be caught in some sort of crazy doctor Doctor Strange time loop. But you know what? I'm so glad that uh, we're able to do this one. It's it's uh, one of the better one, one of the best ones of the three. I think uh, quality written and uh, emotionally invested in, and I, I think it's a good way to to bookend the whole series. It's been 28 years, and I'm still not over the shock of people actually seeing the first one. So <laughs> I can't get my mind around this. <laughs> I mean, you know, you guys, are, you've, been, you know, you've been living with, with Dante and Randall for, for all these years. What is it that does keep bringing you back to make new stories with them? Go ahead, Jeff. Um, you know, for, for me, it's, it's just working with these guys. Um, you know, back in 93, doing this, uh, I wasn't acting, I wasn't in anything, but it was fun to sort of just work with these guys. It, it was my first time doing it, and, and I, I couldn't have asked for a better group of people to work with. Uh, so when it comes to just doing them uh, subsequently, I, I just consider it like going back and hanging out with my friends. Uh, I just have to remember a lot of stuff and then spit it out. Uh, but mostly it, it's just about sort of hanging out with a group of people that I've known now for 30 plus years or whatever it's been. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I see uh, Jason Muse the most out of all this because we do like Comic Con conventions and things like that. So over the years, I've always been in touch with him, especially in Kevin at, at times as well. Um, so coming back to these characters, especially and working with these guys again, and and I've said this to Kevin directly, where look, man, you can call me up at one point, like I want you to be on the Forty Second Street platform of the New York City subway near Times Square. We're gonna shoot something. I'm like, I'm there. Like it doesn't matter what he's doing because I, I think I really enjoy the the work that Kevin puts into writing these scripts. And I really, you know, connect to the kind of humor and uh, also the heart of what he, he writes in, in all his films. So it's it's never, it doesn't take much for me to get anywhere uh, that and working with these guys again. You know, out of all the people I've worked with over the years, I always start coming back to this core group of, they are family friends that we know each other we know what we can get out of each other and it's really really cool yeah i mean with you guys you know having such a good relationship and um, sorry this one's Aww. appeared uh, cat cat. <laughs> yeah um with you guys you know having spent so much time together you know how much do you have any say in in your own characters you know did you have much input into into where the guys were going this time um, I think this time around, we had a little more say in it. Um, Clerks, the original Clerks uh, was very much stick to the page. Um, on Clerks 2, we had a little more freedom because at that point, we had already done the animated series. Uh, so Clerks 2, we had a little bit of freedom. Uh, but on this one, I, I think he gave us the most freedom. Um, you know, we got together prior to shooting and we would do sort of, uh, we would sit at Kevin's rented house and just sort of do read throughs. And a lot of stuff changed during those read throughs. At, at some point, Kevin was literally sitting at the table with a laptop, uh, writing new stuff or writing new dialogue that we had all changed uh, or come up with new stuff. So it, it felt like Kevin was a lot more relaxed with us sort of doing our own thing. And, and he did definitely give us a, a lot more leeway than he did 28 years ago. Yeah, it was definitely more of a collaborative effort than any other of the films, which was fun. You know, some things would swap from, uh, you know, a, a Randall line would swap over to an Elias line or something that, you know, Jay did just physically, physically at the table. He's like, oh, we should do that. Or something, you know, that Jeff would say that I would add to and then that Kevin would follow through with and became a string of things. And it was a lot of fun you know, just getting together and getting into that kind of familiarity of these characters again, bore out what I thought was a, a really great collaborative script in the end. And nostalgia um, is a big thing in, in television and film these days. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of reunions, a lot of, a lot of reboots, you know, you've got stuff like Stranger Things, which are just dredging up everything that we all love from the 80s and uh, from the 80s. And I guess in a way, 
it's a, a similar thing that follows through with Clerks 3. It sort of comes, you know, full circle with, with Dante and Randall, you know, producing a film not too dissimilar to, to Clerks. You know, what was, um, what was it like revisiting the past? Uh, weird, freaky, especially yeah. being back in that store again is definitely something that was just, you know, out of a time machine because nothing has really changed in that store. Um, what used to be the, the the big wall rack of adult magazines had changed to weed pipes and vape pens and stuff like that. So that was the only change because there's no need for print pornography anymore with the internet that you just have, you know, vape pens and, you know, rolling papers and whatnot. So uh, everything else was pretty much how we remembered it from, you know, 1993, uh, yeah, 93 that the nostalgia aspect of it was is built in. You want a quick dose of nostalgia, just go in there and get yourself a Gatorade. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, it was like when, when we read the script, you know, there was that nostalgic feel to it. Um, but I think like when it came down to shooting and we would actually recreate the scenes from 28 years ago, and there would be a lot of, you know, before we would actually uh, partake in the scene, we would pull up the old scenes from Clerks 1 uh and we would watch the scene and sort of mimic the scene again in this one that was where it like it really hit home it was like you know we would shoot the scene and then go back and sort of watch it and uh you know compare it with the old scene that's where it was like being clobbered over the head with nostalgia <laughs> and the film's got a lot of a lot of cameos like a lot of kevin's films tends to tend to bring people out what do you think it is about him as a filmmaker that you know makes people so excited to drop on even if it is just for you know one or two lines he's just fun he's fun to be around his sets are always fun to be on there's no high stakes here we're not making a huge kind of you know disney uh mandalorian kind of thing where there's special effects in a giant green screen and there's 20 operators and puppets it's just us it's us his script in an environment and uh he his his dialogue and his scenarios i think are something that's really cool that a lot of these people come back and and want to work with him again because it's fun stuff it's just fun type of uh, you know there's no pressure really in on any of his sets Cool. And I guess with the film coming out, why should why should audiences take a chance? So I guess especially those who maybe aren't familiar with the series, why should they take a chance on Clerks Three? Jeff, um, you know, it, it's just it, it's it's what it, it you know nowadays everything is superheroes, everything is special effects. Uh, this is a movie that doesn't have any of that. It, it's just regular guys in a regular job going through their day and uh you know like a lot of us they're a little lost <laughs> they've probably been lost longer than most people uh but it's a it, it's about sort of finding your footing uh in a very relatable way and and uh you know it, it's it's also a, a testament to don't take people for granted uh, the, the person that you've had next to you all these years may or may not be there one day uh, so I, I, I think it's, you know, it, it, it's a relatable for people, especially our age. Um, and, you know, hopefully they discover these characters that they can now go back and, and, and watch them uh, in different iterations. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a journey of uh, an everyday kind of person. You know, we're not flying through space. We're not saving. We're not first responders. We're not going in and doing heroic kind of things. We're just living our lives. And especially if someone sees this third film and go, wait a minute, there were others um, and go back and actually see where these guys have progressed. They can kind of, especially if they are our age, they can kind of relate to where that has taken them. But for someone who's younger, these are the type of, like Jeff said, it's a kind of a little warning to be like, you know, live every moment like you can, because these moments and these people can be taken away or you may lose them and uh, and, and regret some of the things you didn't take a chance on. So uh, take a chance with us by seeing this movie. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck with the film. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for taking you. the time out.